What was your longest journey? Perhaps a 15-hour flight across an ocean? A week-long road trip across a continent? Maybe you've traveled thousands of miles crossing time zones and cultures, feeling every hour stretch as you move farther from home. Now multiply that by an unimaginable factor. Imagine a journey lasting six to seven months, not across Earth, but through the emptiness of space, traveling up to 250 million miles to reach another world. This isn't science fiction. This is NASA's plan to send humans to Mars, potentially as early as 2035. If you're captivated by humanity's greatest adventure and want to follow every step of our journey to the Red Planet, subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. You won't want to miss what comes next. NASA's Artemis program isn't just about returning to the moon. It's the essential training ground for Mars. Artemis astronauts will live and work on the lunar surface for months at a time, preparing for the even greater challenges of Mars exploration. Why the moon first? Because at only 240,000 miles from Earth, the moon serves as humanity's testing ground, close enough to rescue missions if something goes wrong, yet harsh enough to validate the technologies we'll need on Mars. Three. Two, one, and lift off. The Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft, the same vehicles that successfully completed the uncrewed Artemis the One mission in November 2022, traveling 1.4 million miles and orbiting as close as 80 miles above the lunar surface, will be the backbone of Mars transportation. But getting to Mars requires far more than powerful rockets. It demands an entirely new way of thinking about human exploration. NASA has developed what it calls the Moon to Mars architecture, an evolving blueprint that defines every element needed for long-term, human-led scientific discovery in deep space. This architecture comprises four segments of increasing complexity, human lunar return, foundational exploration, sustained lunar evolution, and finally, humans to Mars. Think of it as a staircase, where each step must be mastered before we can climb to the next. In December 2024, NASA released its latest architecture update, revealing critical decisions about the Mars mission. One of the most significant, NASA has chosen nuclear fission as the primary power source for the Martian surface, capable of operating regardless of day-night cycles or the fierce dust storms that can shroud Mars for months. The architecture encompasses 12 critical subsystems, autonomous systems and robotics, crew health and performance support, communications and navigation, habitation systems, extravehicular activity equipment, in-situ resource utilization, infrastructure support, logistics, mobility systems for surface exploration, power generation, transportation, and scientific utilization systems. Every single one must work flawlessly millions of miles from the nearest repair shop, The Mars mission will take approximately six to seven months each way, covering up to 250 million miles. That's not a typo. Each way, the astronauts won't just fly to Mars and come home. They may spend as many as 500 days on the planet's surface before the orbital mechanics align for a return journey. This creates unprecedented challenges. During those seven months in transit, astronauts will live in microgravity, their bones losing density, their muscles atrophying despite rigorous exercise regimens. When they finally arrive at Mars, they'll need time to recover and adapt even to Mars's partial gravity, which is roughly one-third of Earth's. NASA is considering having crews live in a pressurized rover during their initial time on Mars, 
allowing them to drive around and conduct science before they're physically conditioned enough to perform demanding spacewalks. Communication becomes another profound challenge. Messages between Earth and Mars can take up to 44 minutes round trip, depending on the planet's positions in their orbits. There's no real-time mission control support, no instant advice when equipment fails. The crew must be autonomous, making life-or-death decisions on their own. You can't prepare for Mars by reading about it. You have to live it. That's why NASA built Mars Dune Alpha, a 1,700-square-foot 3D-printed habitat at Johnson Space Center in Houston. On October 19, 2025, four volunteers, Ross Elder, Ellen Ellis, Matthew Montgomery, and James Spicer, entered this simulated Martian habitat to begin a 378-day mission, concluding on October 31st, 2026. This is the second of three year-long Chapia missions. The first crew completed their simulation on July 6, 2024, after 378 days of isolation. These missions provide NASA with foundational data on human health and performance, evaluating factors like cognitive function, physical performance, and psychological resilience under Mars' realistic conditions. The habitat includes separate areas for living and working, with private bedrooms, a kitchen, medical center, bathrooms, and workstations. Crew members grow crops, maintain their habitat, exercise, carry out robotic operations, and conduct simulated spacewalks in a 1,200-square-foot sandbox area with Mars murals and red sand. They face equipment failures, communication delays, resource limitations, and the grinding psychological toll of confinement. What makes Chapia unique is its combination of extended isolation and confinement with Mars realistic communication delays and resource limitations that go beyond what's possible on the International Space Station or other analog missions. The food system is restricted, the water is rationed, every decision has consequences. This is as close to Mars as you can get without leaving Earth. We already have remarkable robots on Mars. Perseverance is currently collecting samples that might contain evidence of ancient microbial life. So why risk human lives? NASA formed the Human Exploration of Mars Science Analysis Group to identify which research questions require human presence rather than cheaper robotic missions. The key questions are profound. Is there life on Mars today? Remember, 3.8 billion years ago, when life formed on Earth, Mars was remarkably similar. It had abundant liquid water in oceans, lakes, and rivers, and possessed a denser atmosphere. What happened? What environmental changes caused Mars to lose its widespread water and much of its atmosphere? Human explorers can make split-second decisions, recognize unexpected patterns, and adapt to surprising discoveries in ways that robots cannot. They can drill deeper, explore farther, and investigate geological features with an intuition built from millions of years of human evolution. A geologist on Mars could accomplish in days what a rover might take months to achieve. NASA's current plan aims to send humans to Mars potentially as early as 2035. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson has stated that the agency's plan is for humans to walk on Mars by 2040. The date isn't fixed. It depends on funding, technological breakthroughs, and the successful completion of Artemis lunar missions. Artemis III, scheduled for 2026, will return humans to the lunar surface for the first time since 1972. 
Artemis V, expected in March 2030, will deliver the first lunar terrain vehicle to the moon, an unpressurized rover that will dramatically extend the range and capability of surface exploration. Each mission builds capabilities essential for Mars. The 2030s will be transformative. While we perfect lunar operations, NASA will finalize the Mars architecture, develop the Mars descent and ascent vehicles, test life support systems for multi-year missions, and select the brave individuals who will become the first Martians. Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine suggested in 2019 that we could very well see the first person on Mars be a woman. The crew will likely be small. Early proposals suggest as few as two to four people for initial missions. They'll need to be versatile. Pilot, scientist, engineer, and doctor all rolled into one. They'll face dangers we can barely imagine. Radiation exposure during the journey. The psychological strain of isolation so complete that Earth becomes just a blue dot. Equipment failures with no Home Depot in sight. Medical emergencies with no ambulance coming. Yet they'll go anyway, driven by the same spirit that pushed humans across oceans, over mountains, and into space itself. We stand at a threshold. Everything NASA is doing right now, every Artemis mission, every Shapia simulation, every technology demonstration is a stepping stone to Mars. As NASA's Katherine Kerner stated, identifying and analyzing high-level architecture decisions are the first steps to realizing a crude Mars exploration campaign. The challenges are immense. The journey is dangerous. The timeline is uncertain but the potential rewards transcend anything in human history. We're not just exploring another planet. We're answering the question that has haunted humanity since we first looked up at the night sky. Are we alone? Mars waits for us, red and cold and ancient. Somewhere in its dusty plains and dried up riverbeds might be the answer. And soon, perhaps within the lifetime of many watching this, Human eyes will see those planes directly, human hands will touch that ancient soil, and humanity will take its next giant leap into the cosmos. The journey to Mars isn't just about getting there. It's about becoming the species that can get there, that can thrive there, that can look back at Earth from another world and know we did something truly extraordinary. That journey has already begun. If you enjoyed this journey through the terrifying beauty of space, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss what's coming next.